This video will discuss freezing point depression and boiling point elevation as a colligative property of a solution. So the melting temperature or the temperature of fusion of a substance is the point at which the chemical potential of the solid phase of the solvent in our solution is equal to the chemical potential in the liquid phase of this solution. So I have the subscript 1 here indicating that it is the solvent of our solution. So the chemical potential of component 1 in a liquid solution is equal to the chemical potential of the pure liquid plus gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the activity of our solvent. So the, the temperature at which melting occurs is going to be where the chemical potential of the solid of the solvent is equal to the chemical potential of the liquid of the solvent plus RT times the natural log of the activity of the solvent. So the natural log of the activity of the solvent is going to equal the chemical potential of the solid minus the chemical potential of the liquid divided by gas constant times temperature. Okay, so it's at this point that we're going to bring in the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, which says that the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy divided by temperature with respect to temperature, and that's evaluated at a constant pressure and mole fraction of component one, mole fraction of our solvent, is equal to which is also equal to um, the, the molar Gibbs energy of the solvent is the chemical potential of the solvent. So it's equal to the partial derivative of the chemical potential of the solvent over temperature with respect to temperature at constant pressure and mole fraction of the solvent. And that is equal to the negative molar enthalpy of the solvent divided by the temperature squared. Okay, so the partial derivative of the natural log of the activity coefficient with respect to temperature, which is coming from this uh, d mu 1 over t, is equal to, we have the molar enthalpy of the liquid of the solvent minus the molar enthalpy of the, of the solid of the solvent divided by rt squared which is equal to the enthalpy change of fusion for the solvent divided by RT squared. So the integral of the change in the log of the activity of the solvent is equal to the integral from the melting point of the pure liquid solvent up to the new melting point of the uh, solution with our solvent. So that is the integral over the enthalpy change of fusion of the solvent divided by RT squared with respect to T. So it's at this point where we can use our approximation here. The natural log of the activity is approximately the natural log of the mole fraction because the activity approaches the mole fraction as the mole fraction approaches 1. For solvents, the mole fraction is very close to 1. So natural log of chi 1 equals natural log of 1 minus chi 2. If there's two components in our mixture, then they both must sum up to 1. So chi 1 plus chi 2 equals 1. Chi 1 equals 1 minus chi 2. And if we do a Taylor series for natural log of 1 minus chi 2, or evaluated at chi 2 equals 0, then the first term that comes up in that Taylor series is the linear term, which is minus chi 2. So we can approximate the natural log of the activity of our solvent as the negative mole fraction of our solute. So as I said there, the, the mole fraction of the solvent is approximately 1, as, and thus the activity of our, sol, of our solvent is approximately its mole fraction. Uh, natural log of 1 minus x, Taylor series of that gives you minus x as the first term. Okay, so the minus mole fraction of the solute chi 2 is equal to, if we assume that the uh, enthalpy 
the molar enthalpy change of fusion of our solvent is independent of temperature. We'll take that out of the integral, which that's going to be a pretty good approximation because we're only expecting a few Kelvin of temperature change here uh, during this uh, that is going to result from a, a result of this uh, freezing point depression. So, and the gas constant is constant as well. So pull both of those out of the integral. Minus chi 2 equals delta fuse h bar 1 over r times the integral from the, mel the melting point of the pure liquid to the new melting point of the solution of dt over t squared. So the integral of dt over t squared is minus 1 over t. So that evaluated from t fuse to t fuse star gives us 1 over t fuse minus 1 over t fuse star. And if we have a dilute solution, we showed in uh, two videos ago that chi 2, the mole fraction, is approximately equal to the molar mass of the solvent times the molality of the solute. So chi 2 is approximately big M1 times M2, which is also equal to now pulling out the minus sign from this integral, minus delta fuse h bar 1 over r, times 1 over the melting point of our solution minus the melting point of the pure liquid solvent. Um, we can also, let's see, what else are we going to factor here? I believe we're going to uh, multiply the top and bottom of these equations such that we get this result. So we're going to have M1, M2, we are canceling out the minus signs there, equals the molar enthalpy change of fusion divided by R times, and then just algebraic rearrangement of these two there. Uh, multiply this top and bottom by T fuse star. Multiply this top and bottom by T fuse. You get T fuse star minus T fuse over T fuse star times T fuse. We're also going to approximate that the new melting point is approximately equal to the melting point of the pure solvent. So T fuse star times T fuse is going to be replaced by T fuse star squared. T fuse star minus T fuse, uh, we're going to define delta T fuse as the uh, melting point of the pure solution uh, minus the melting point of the new, uh, sorry, the melting point of the pure solvent minus the melting point of the new solution. So that gives us minus delta fuse h bar 1 over r times delta t fuse over t fuse star squared. So this is going to give us as a final net result if we rearrange for delta t fuse. So multiply both sides by t fuse star uh, squared times r divided by uh, minus t, uh, delta h fuse, delta h bar fuse 1 we get that the change in melting point that occurs due to the dissolution of a solute into our solvent is equal to the negative molar mass of the solvent times the gas constant times the original melting point squared divided by the molar enthalpy change that occurs during melting. How much heat do we absorb during that uh, phase change? All of this times the molality of the solute. So we'll now define a constant as Kf. Kf equals molar mass of the solute times gas constant times the original melting point squared divided by the molar enthalpy change of melting of the solvent. So now the change in the melting point equals the negative uh, Kf times the molality of the solute. Notice it's a colligative property here because all that matters is the molality of the solute and not what the solute is. As long as it's dilute, this, this uh, equation will be approximately true. You could go through an entirely similar derivation for boiling and show that you get a boiling point elevation where there you have a Kb where everything is the same except for now you have the temperature of vaporization the boiling point, and the enthalpy of vaporization, the heat that you absorb during boiling, and you get delta T of vaporization equals plus Kb times M2.
So usually what we see is uh, the for the melting point squared divided by the enthalpy of of melting, we find that that's a greater value than the enthalpy than the temperature of vaporization squared divided by the enthalpy of vaporization. So the enthalpy of vaporization is usually much much bigger than the corresponding value for melting, and that does not account for and the bigger temperature of vaporization doesn't account for that uh, difference when you square it. So usually we are decreasing our freezing point more than we are increasing our boiling point, but that all depends on what the relative temperatures of those phase changes are and what the enthalpy change during that phase transition is. Uh, the molar mass of the solvent is going to stay constant during that, but all that matters for the net result is that this is proportional to the molality of any solute that we dissolve into this solvent.